another episode of the Branded Academy, this time the Rage of the Abyss format, how to play as Amina Branded, and of course, how to play around Flawless. People have been asking me this so much recently, and you're gonna see that. We're gonna look at some gameplay reviews here with the Branded as Amina deck that I've uploaded a few days ago, so make sure to check it out before you watch this video, and hopefully you can learn something from this Branded Academy episode. Don't forget to subscribe for more brand academies regularly we're working on a lot of new cool videos so make sure you check them out thank you so much for watching and let us begin i did promise you some gameplay with the new azamina branded deck and this is going to be it we're going to be looking at around three replays here that show some capabilities of this deck if you want more content like this leave it down in the comments below like the video and subscribe to the channel of course if you want to get early access to all my deck lists and talk to me personally you can join as a member to our discord server now this is going to be the first game let's see some technical plays some explorations of combos and uh, this is one where it's very easy for us to play around flawless people are asking me this in the comments a lot how do you play around this card of course branded is a deck that needs a special summon from the extract quite a lot but let's see how many draws we're able to give our opponent. Now, the good thing about Branded in the context of Fualos is the fact that Cartesia can trigger during the opponent's turn. So you could set up for the opponent's turn, right? And um, basically fuse on their turn so you don't give them any draws. So now we're able to special summon from the hand here and we're able to get Branded in red, Deception, to get us now we're basically setting up the floor here to play on our opponent's turn right they get a draw from the sylvia and now we get an omni negate we get a branded in red which can turn into basically anything that we want we could have gotten a draw but i wanted to keep deception in the graveyard for follow-up and we have cartesia here so this could go really in any way right instant fusion and then we're playing against Atlanteans here, and we're going into, um, they're trying to go into Xyz. Now, on Summon, it's very important that you get rid of the Neptobus as quickly as possible. So, we gave them one draw during their turn, but we have so many layered interruptions here that it's going to be really hard um, for my opponent to play. Going into Granganyol here, which can send us Brimbrim from the graveyard. There's already a fusion on our opponent's board, so we're able to just use our Albaz, which we set up in the turn before, and go into uh, a Mirror Jade here, using the Mud Dragon. That's another interruption, and that's a Banish. And now, don't forget, we are still we still have everything, an Omni Negate, and we kept the Branded in red, so again, we can play on our opponent's turn. Resolving Branded Fusion in that turn wouldn't really do much. We have Abyss Shrine here, cost, we're going to be negating that. Um, there's going to be another Neptobis coming. And we're going to tag out and summon Quem from the deck. Quem is going to dump us another copy of Albaz. And then we can go ahead and make Albion here. And Albion can banish two and make Chaos Star Source Dragon, which is another card you've seen in my deck. Basically, I can now target and pop up to two. Um, with Chimera, this wouldn't have been possible because I could not in any way shape or form get two cards in hand to fuse with so this is only a job for chaos star force dragon or again with furious as well but then you kind of give up the furious because we don't have opening and then basically this was a little bit of a chapter on um how to play around flawless now a little bit for sky striker right now i think they let me start here i'm not sure who won the die roll but Striker is a deck that you probably should be aware of. And being a Striker player myself that has played the deck a lot and are currently honestly playing it, um, you can see some sequencing and some combos here for me. Um, so this is full, full combo. This is the most the most combo you can get. But in this deck, we're not playing Gimmick Puppet Nightmare. So in this scenario, we're not going to be locking our opponent. We're just going to be playing our board to the best of our ability. We still have Mirror Jade. Um, we, of course, grab Branded Lost, and then we fuse away. This is super normal combo. Sometimes here, if you already used um, Retribution, you could grab Springan's Kit here, 
to make sure you get the trap card. Um, but then, of course, we send the Titanic Lad. What you see here exactly is the ultimate two-card combo of Fusion Deployment and Alubur. If you're new to this deck, this is the only combo that you need to know, to be honest. I mean, not the only combo, obviously. But this is the bread and butter best board that you can do with only two cards. This is the most streamlined combo. Albion is going to set it Retribution because we already have so much and ways to access so much that we don't honestly need um, another interruption with Branded and Red. We got Desires here and they draw two. That's a lot of gas. This is going to be a lot of gas. They have so many cards to break the board. Now, we get Raigeki. Now, this could happen to you against Tenpai as well, right? It's basically the same card pool. Um, we don't have opening in the graveyard. So, we're going to have to make sure we don't die and lose everything. So, Mirror Jade, I'm not going to activate it. So, here, with this, I'm realizing that this is Striker. Striker's best cards are straight up just Talents and Thrust. They will not be able to kill me because I have ways to play around that. And I'm just not giving them any monster effects. Nothing. They get engaged. That's fine. Widow Anchor. Nobody cares. They draw. And then now they set a card and activate Linkage, which I negate. Because otherwise they probably would have normal summoned. And it's basically scoopage from there. Right? With four cards in hand, which probably two of them at least are thrusts. Now I side in for going first. I basically decide to not play with this hand. Even though I have full combo, I want to kill the next turn. So I set opening and I set judgment. And if I don't play, they don't get to play. So we go upstart goblin. We're just going to gain life points here. Engage into Ray and then Ray summon. That's okay. Kagari gets the judgment. So now this was not properly summoned. Ray cannot come back and the effect doesn't activate here. Now they set one pass. And now we can go ahead, set Albas in the graveyard so that we can access Cartesia. Chain one Cartesia, chain two opening here to make sure we have some protection. Branded fusion, and then we get hit with Ash Blossom. Talents to look at the hand. We get rid of their talents. We fuse away. We lose to a Widow Anchor. But then we have set up during the next turn, basically. And that's going to be it. Now, the last replay I want to show you is against Fire King. Fire King one of the best decks in this format specifically just because it plays dominus impulse which is such a good card um Serenir, and we get hit with a flawless on the hollow does amina so we get the omni negate onto the board deployment from the deck give them another draw with albaz and then normal summon the cartesia and end our turn this is very close to the setup that we've done the last time we hit flawless but still they have seven cards to play with which is a lot um they grab the Abel Star here with the Wanted. They go ahead and start. They start by sending the Abel Star. So I'm like a little bit confused here. It means this is obviously not a super good hand. We go for, uh, now we realize it's actually Fire King. They go for Deception here. We have to negate the Hollow to Zamina because it gives them both a starter and an Omni Negate for later. They can just spam out the Omni Negate and then it checks our Omni Negate and any of our plays. And you know, that's basically it. Ulkanex destroys Kirin, and uh, yeah, it's definitely not ideal in this scenario. There's nothing really we could have done better here. Um, so we scoop it up. We go first here, and we have Judgment and our Sinful Spoils Engine. We tribute the Bellstar here, and go ahead and use the Hollow Dozamina. We get hit with Falls again. Go for the Omni. We go for a Luber here, Brand Fusion, and now let's play. Let's play. Let's just give them draws. Because in this scenario, they're just spamming out their hand, basically. Now we make Proskinion here. Why do we make Proskinion? Because this card can steal their Azamina fusions and not allow them to get to it. And uh, they have Grunix effect. They summon a lot during my turn. Grunix destroys from the graveyard. And then Kirin, we have to negate this with Sylvia. We have to negate. Cartesia special summon. We go ahead and summon from the extra deck again. Now, the draws aren't that significant anymore, right? Hollow does Amina, get back to hand, set the judgment, and end on not a lot. But we have a lot of graveyard interference here, and Ash Blossom again. Cartesia goes back to hand because we're not going to have a Quem at this stage, and then bonfire for Ash. Now, 
Book of Eclipse, the entire field. Go ahead and normal summon Snake Eye Ash. Poplar effect in the hand. And they grab the OG. Now they can access, you know, they, they have the Fire King engine online already, but yeah. They summon Oak from the hand. And now they summon Flamberge. We're just waiting on that Judgment, basically. This is why Judgment is not a, such a strong card that I really like. You can sit on it and wait for the best moment to, to fire it off. Now, they go through the motions here. Basically, the entire combo, there's no reason for them to lose. And they try to place our Albaz onto the field here. And now we make a Mirror Jade. Mirror Jade can now banish um, the Flammerge so they don't get so many follow-up. Fire King Island, Normal Summon the Ponyx, oh, Special Summon the Ponyx rather. And now we trigger the Mirror Jade here, they pop our Mirror Jade, and it's going to be blowing up in the end phase. And I'm pretty sure I survive because of Solemn Judgment. So now we go ahead and shuffle back, make the Azamina Fusion, draw one card with Wanted, go for Princess, and now we just negate the Princess. Now it can't come back. It cannot revive from the graveyard. It basically leaves them on two monsters. This is the best place to do that. They can extend a bit with Birch. And uh, they go battle. They forget my boy is big. And they go main two. They link these off, which I don't know why, for the life of me. They try to banish it, but now we're able to steal the Sylvia and get our own negate. And it's just going to stay on the board. Now their board is blown up because of Mirror Jade. And we have full combo once again, get hit with the Fualos, but they're already down 500 life points. We can finish this game pretty quickly. We don't want the field to be blown up because then that's more triggers for them. We go for the Azamina Soul here. This is why we play this card as a good turn three board breaker. We summon this with Hollowed Azamina, target, send. They try to princess it, they can't because it's not properly summoned. And this does not trigger because it sends to the graveyard. Now basically we just need two more summons. The Branded Fusion and uh, Quem can now bring back Mirror Jade. Wanted to draw another card and uh, just game. Go on to game three with this wonderful deck. And um, we have Droplet, which is pretty solid. We have Droplet. Um, now, they have kind of a weird combo here. I think it's just like an Ulcanix combo, basically. I don't think they're going to be able to access the Snake Eye stuff or the Diabell Star stuff. So, it's just Link plays. Zombie Vampire. And this is huge here. Now, this is huge. They don't hit anything important. But this, you're going to see how crazy that is. They banish the Albaz. Okay. Princess summons back Flamberge. Flamberge places the Cartesia here. Now, Stellar can send this card. <laughs> it can send this card. So yeah, Barong brings back that. Deployment. They chain Kirin. Um, and I get Albaz onto the board. And they summon the SP, which just gets eaten immediately. Now, because I used a spell card, and this is why I did this deliberately... Spell card for cost for Albaz. We can summon the Estellar, Promethean Princess. Um, we're going to be chaining to make sure the Kirin doesn't go to grave. Mirror Jade can now trigger. Talents can take this. We can place it. And now we can use Estellar to send the Cartesia, which is a spell currently, to get this. And here it's game over. So, not the, the strongest opponents. Right? or the most optimal plays, but just showing you a little bit, you know, another take on how to play this deck to its maximum potential as much as you can. Leave your comments and thoughts down below. Thank you so much for watching. As always, like the video, subscribe for more content like this. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.